In this video, we're going to learn about titrations. First, we'll learn what a titration is, and then we'll learn how you perform a titration, and then we'll solve an example problem to calculate the concentration um, of a solution uh, that uses a titration. So let's start with what a titration actually is. So the definition of a titration is it's a technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution by adding a solution of known concentration. When we perform a titration, there's a couple terms that we need to be aware of. So first off, we have an unknown solution. And generally, we'd put that into a flask right here. So this would be our unknown. Now, we would be able to measure the volume of the unknown. So we could look on our container and see how much we added. We just don't know how concentrated the solution is. When we think of concentration, we're thinking of how much solute there is inside the solution. What we're going to do is add a titrant. And we put that titrant into something called a burette. You may have seen these in a chemistry lab. They're a big, tall glass tube with a valve on the bottom that you can turn this and drop, slowly drop this titrant into the solution. And with an acid-base titration, that's the one we're going to focus on in this video, what we're going to do is usually have an unknown acid, so an acid in here where we don't know the concentration, and we're going to add a base. Now the base, we know its concentration, and so as we add the base, this is going to neutralize. So when you put a base and an acid together, they're going to cancel each other. And what we're trying to do is figure out when is this completely neutralized. So what we do is we use a couple different methods. The first method is we can graph the pH of the solution uh, versus the volume of base that's added. Now, the solution originally would be acidic, and so it would have a pretty low pH. And as we start adding base, the pH would gradually increase. Now, as we get close to the neutralization point, we'll suddenly have a sharp spike in pH, and then it's going to level off again just like that. So this is commonly how titration curves would look. So we call this thing a titration curve. And right smack dab in the middle of this big increase is going to be what's called the equivalence point. The equivalence point is when the acid has been completely neutralized by the base. For a strong acid and strong base, it's going to be at a pH of 7. So if we have the computer equipment available to us where we can actually make one of these graphs during a titration, that's going to be the best method to find the equivalence point, or in other words, the point at which the acid is neutralized by the base. But oftentimes we don't have that available, so another option is we can add something called an indicator to our solution of unknown. And the indicator is going to be a chemical that's not going to affect the concentration of our acid in any way, but it's going to change color when the acid is neutralized. And there's a lot of different types of indicators. And so as we start adding the base from our uh, burette into the flask, we're going to look for that point where the color changes. And these indicators are going to change at very specific pHs. So we would choose an indicator, a chemical that would change color at exactly a pH of 7. And that way we would know what the equivalence point was. So during a titration, we're trying to find the concentration of this stuff right here, the unknown. In the acid-base titration that we talked about before, this would be the acid. We measure concentrations in molarity, and we use the symbol capital M. So that you, when you see this one, we're talking about concentration. Now, we need to know some information in order to solve for that concentration. The first thing we have to know, and this is step one of our list of steps here, is we have to measure the volume of the unknown. And once we've measured the volume and we've added that into our flask, then we're going to add an indicator. Something's going to change color when we've reached the equivalence point. Then we could start adding the titrant. And the titrant in this case will be the base because we have acid down here, so we're going to add a base. Now the base, we must know both the concentration and also the volume that we've added into this unknown solution in order to raise the pH to the equivalence point. When we've reached the equivalence point, we can use these three known pieces of information. That is the concentration of the titrant, the volume added, and the volume of the unknown to solve for our only unknown in this case, which is the concentration uh, of the unknown solution. So let's try an example. So this problem says 50 milliliters of an acid of unknown concentration was neutralized with 35.4 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. It says, what is the concentration of the acid? So this is the same situation that we're looking at here. Here's our acid. 
and in this case we have 50 mils of this acid right here and we've added 35.4 milliliters of this base. First thing I do when I solve a problem is I list all the different variables that I know. So I know the volume of the unknown acid, I know the volume of base I had to add, and I know the concentration of the base. I also like to list the symbol for the uh, variable that I'm looking for. In this case I'm trying to find the concentration. We measure that in molarity, that's why I'm using the symbol M of the acid. And I'm just going to leave that as a question mark. Although we're working with concentrations, that is concentration of the acid and concentration of the base, one thing that's going to be true for an acid-base reaction is that the number of moles of acid is going to be equal to the number of moles of base that were used to, to titrate that acid. So this equation right here is really key to understanding titrations. The moles of the acid is going to be equal to the moles of the base. So there's a couple ways we could solve a titration problem. I like to use something called the titration equation. It's essentially this equation right here. I'm just going to modify it to include the variables that I am given in this problem. So anytime you have concentration and volume of a solution, if you multiply them together, you're going to get the number of moles in that solution. So I can change this equation right here to look like this, concentration of acid times volume of acid is going to be the same thing as the number of moles of acid and that's going to be equal to the concentration of base times the volume of base. Now I can rearrange it because what I'm solving for here is the concentration of the acid. So I'm going to move this or divide both sides in other words by VA. I'm going to move that over here. So now it's just a matter of plugging in all my known information, all these variables that I have listed in the problem. So we could plug that all into our calculator and we'll end up with an answer of 0 0.0708 molar for the concentration of the acid. And so that is a titration.